In this presentation, I'll talk about modeling analytics for computational storage. My name is Veronica Lagrange, and this is a joint work with Harry Lee and Ana Rita Chayeste. I'll start by explaining what computational storage is or is going to be and why we need to model it. The use case we're covering is online analytical processing or OLAP, a famously data intensive set of applications used to mine large quantities of data to discover patterns aiming to help with decision making. We will spend a few minutes explaining the basic unit of OLAP, an SQL query. We will describe the elements that are common to most big data queries, how those elements are executed and their cost. We identify which elements should be pushed down and executed near storage. We examine a subset of queries from the TPCGS benchmark an OLAP benchmark that has gained some traction in recent years. We consider Parquet, a columnar file format, and analyze two database engines that use Parquet, Presto and Spark SQL. Current wave of near storage solutions using FPGAs are just being released. In the meantime, we model their potential. The bulk of this presentation is about our modeling methodology and results. 20 years ago, I.O. was the bottleneck for big data analytics. And that bottleneck was mitigated by attaching many hard disks to each server. With the advent of flash storage, the bottleneck has shifted. Today, servers can no longer keep up with the flow and the SSD bandwidth goes unused. Some OLAP queries involve reading in large quantities of data, hey, to look for a few needles. Other queries involve aggregating a very large number of records, looking for an average count or some other statistic. The idea is that some of these common and somewhat simple computations could be executed near storage. That is, rows can be filtered inside or near the storage device, and only a few selected rows are actually sent to the server. That's a winner approach at many levels. SSDs are now better utilized, network switches and memory are freed from useless hay, server capacity increases, once it no longer must process a deluge of hay. For OLAP, viable near storage operations include decompression, decoding, filter, projection, some aggregates, the ones that are commutative, associative, and distributive, sort and some joins. This is what a query looks like. This one is looking for the best and worst performing products for a specific store. To answer that question, we must scan a very large table containing all sales for all stores. We must calculate the average net profit for each item sold by a specific store. And we must compare all other sales to that average. The text to the right is the SQL query defining what is needed. The database engine must parse the SQL and determine how that query is to be executed. For big data, 
the query plan usually looks like the graph to the left. Some big table is scanned, which means records are read from storage and transformed to the database's internal format. Some rows from that table are selected, filtered. Some columns are selected, projected. The remaining intermediate results are then aggregated, joined, sorted until the final answer is obtained. Next, we talk about which operations to optimize. There is to push down to near storage. The natural candidates are operations at the leaves of the query plan. They are scan, filter, projection. These operations can be pushed down with little change to the database engine software. For some queries, they are the bottleneck. For queries with high scan ratio and high selectivity in their filter projections, near storage optimization benefits will be really big. Let's now switch gears and talk about the workload we use, TPC DS. We experiment with two engines, Spark SQL and Presto, both in memory databases. We use two eight node cluster and scale factor 10,000, which translates to a 10 terabyte data set. Not all queries can be executed by both engines, and the most common error is out of memory which is due to the intermediate results not fitting in the cluster memory. The 99 queries by design have very different characteristics and performance behavior. Some are CPU intensive, some are IO intensive, some are both. The shortest query is query 41 that completes in about one second under Presto and seven seconds under Spark SQL. The longest running query is query 72, which takes more than 25 hours to complete under Presto and about two and a half hours under Spark SQL. Most queries complete between two and 20 minutes. Both clusters live in the Hadoop ecosystem, and the, the common aspect is the Parquet file format. Uh, Parquet was designed for OLAP applications. It stores tables by column. It's a columnar database, and it is read optimized. And so we start with um, read optimized environment and we want to see what else near storage can do for such an environment. Furthermore, Parquet contains the metadata for each table inside each one of its files and that is important for uh, uh, computational storage. We need to know which column represents which value. Um, another plus is that existing Parquet readers can filter and project certain data types using statistics contained in that metadata. Because we expect that queries with high scan ratio and high filter selectivity will benefit more from near storage optimization, we prefer the queries that fall into that category, represented for the queries at the top of this grid. So this grid shows queries, uh, CPU utilization, less CPU, more CPU, 
scan ratio less and more. So the ones on top are IO intensive. Uh, however, we also selected some queries from the middle and the bottom as a control group. Our Spark SQL performance estimate is based on how the database engine plan is executed in stages with dependencies. For example, this is a generic query that involves three tables, one dimension table, two fact tables that are read in stages 0, 1, and 2. Then stages 3 and 4 sort the results from the previous stages. Uh, the final result, the, those intermediate results, are then passed to stage 5 for a final join operation. So the first three stages include scan, filter, and projection as marked by the light dot shades. These are the operations we want to push down to near storage. So in this query, the time spent on those operations are 1, 5, and 8 seconds, respectively. So the offloaded execution time of those stages is calculated as follows. We reserve one second for offloading related handshaking. This is an arbitrary number. We assume that the filter and projection uh, uh, running in the device happens at wire speed and can be omitted. This may be an optimistic assumption, in which case our model is providing an upper bound. Um, the actual filter runtime will depend on the compute and I.O. capabilities of the device. And finally, the time to transfer data between the device and the host is calculated based on the device read bandwidth and we assume it to be three gigabytes per second. So when we apply this methodology to this query, the response time decreases from 18 to 12 seconds. So this, the, the image in, in the bottom, is our model estimate for this query. We apply the same analysis to a subset of TPC DS query. To model push down benefit operations on the Presto cluster, we use a slightly different approach. We create and populate smaller tables that we call model tables. These model tables contain only the rows and columns that would be selected by a computational storage engine executing the scan filter projection operations defined by the query. We repeat the query using the model table and compare results against the same query using the original table. For Presto, both original and model queries generate the exact same query plan. If that was not the case, we would not be able to compare results. Similar to our Spark SQL model, the performance difference is the upper bound of the speed up that a computational storage device would yield. Because this model also assumes that the storage device would be capable of filtering and projecting rows and columns at wire speeds. However, if we take into consideration the higher internal flash storage bandwidth, this may be a realistic approximation of the expected speed up. And Furthermore, the data transformation part that would be pushed down is still being performed by the host servers. 
So in this example, this little table down would be the model of the large table above. For a query, select ABC, where G is greater than 2. These are our results. For some queries, there's no speed up. Some queries see really good speed ups. The outlier is Presto Query 44, which sees a 5 9 times speed up. The geometric mean is 3.7 for Presto and 2.8 for Spark SQL. Query 75 sees a similar speed up for both Presto and Spark. And that, that's a two times speed up. Not only we don't see similar speed ups for all queries, but different scale factors show different speed ups for the same query running in the same database engine. Usually, the larger the amount of data to be processed, the higher the speed up. For example, for Presto, increasing the data set size from 1 terabyte to 10 terabytes will cause a geometric mean speed up to increase from 1.3 to 3.7. Uh, this is the only slide that quotes a scale factor 1 terabyte data set. The rest of the presentation only talks about the 10 terabyte. And uh, so, so this increase in speed up is a matter of volume. So as the amount of data flooding the cluster increases, the higher the benefit of scan filter and projection near storage because we are alleviating multiple bottlenecks. So we alleviate the load not only to the CPU, but to memory network. Uh, and, and that's, we see across the board that the speed up increases at higher scale factors. So now let's look at some uh, detailed performance data. Presto Query 44 is the one with the most impressive speed up. Response time went from over 18 minutes to 19 seconds. The total bytes read by the model is three orders of magnitude smaller while the average CPU busy, we went from somewhere between 35 and 40 percent to around 10 percent. Query 75 is a middle of the pack query that shows two times the speed up for both engines and both methodologies. So in this slide, we see CPU and disk activity for query 75 running on Presto for both the original and the model queries. Notice that query 75 has a barrier where all CPU and disk activity goes to zero. All gains from the near storage happen before that barrier and elapsed time went from 23 to 10 minutes. After the barrier, both original and model take another three minutes to complete. So uh, in this presentation, we covered our modeling experiments with near storage optimization for OLAP. We showed that the benefits from near storage optimization are not universal, but that some queries see impressive speed ups. Furthermore, we only cover the basic operations like the low hanging fruit. Other operations such as aggregates may be pushed down and may benefit some other queries. 
uh, one that comes to mind is query nine. Uh, thank you for your attention. And this concludes our presentation.